sticking together. Good. Um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, 3D. This is one of the rare ones that I actually saw in theaters and was able to pick up in 3D Blu-ray. And not like a re-release like Finding Nemo was, but like an actual 3D movie in the theaters. And 3D is pretty good. Uh, this is a pretty good movie. I think this would have been great as a standalone, but then they were like, oh, we want to do five movies in this series. And, and then the second movie came out, and I haven't seen it, but I've heard a lot of not great things about it. So it's a shame that they, they were like, they came out of the gate with a really powerful story and then they just stumbled and fell on their face. But this, this one is worth it. Uh, worth it even without the 3D. But the 3D in this movie is pretty good. It's, it's been a while since I've seen this. Nothing super stands out to me, but the animals in 3D are pretty great. Let me get some water. We have a lot, we have a lot more to go. Here, he's in a good one. This is another stop motion animated film in 3D, Frank and Weenie. I believe this one was a post conversion job, but all the same, the 3D is still fantastic. I was trying to look on the back to see if I could see if it was post converted or shot that way. I don't know, I can't remember. Maybe, I think it might have been shot in 3D or post converted. I don't know, but the point is, they, they knew what they were doing, and this is a fantastic 3D uh, film. If you don't have Freak and Weenie and you're interested in picking it up, get the 3D version if you can. Um, they, they, I mean, right out of the beginning, the main character is making like a 3D film in his room. So, I mean, they knew, and it's a, it's a hallmark. It's a callback to those classic 1950s horror films. This movie is entirely in black and white I believe I, I saw it somewhat recently like back in Halloween but yeah really bold of Disney to make a movie like this just release it in black and white and it's really good though really 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 good if you're a fan of classic horror films you're gonna love this one the classic monster movies from like Universal this is one you're definitely gonna want to pick up and pick up in 3D because it's really good now this is a re-release I believe uh, post-converted re-release gamer in 3d now I can't remember too much I believe okay I believe this movie is if you're a criminal you can be sent in this vert you get controlled by like some rich person in a virtual reality game and if you somehow survive you get your freedom these are like people that are put on death row and they you have the option to play these games and if you win then you get to go free there's like some conspiracy going on, but the 3D in this movie is, the post conversion is not super fantastic. Sometimes it looks okay, but this movie is, eh, I mean, you're not going to miss it if you don't see it. I just remember not being super impressed. It is rated R though, so you get a lot of, it, it's really a bizarre idea, so maybe pick it up just for that. Oh. Godzilla, I didn't see this movie in theaters. I didn't jump on the Godzilla train until it came out on Blu-ray. Then I saw Kong Skull Island in theaters. But this movie in 3D is fantastic. This is a great 3D movie. 3D lends itself really well to kaiju films. And I like this more than a lot of critics do. I liked all the, uh, I like all the Monarch Cinematic Universe films. The kaiju movies that they're doing. But 3D is great. They really do a good job of building up Godzilla and the final battle between Godzilla and the parasite creatures is fantastic. That final shot of Godzilla blowing his, um, his radiation breath down the neck of that parasite is... That was worth it. The whole movie. I remember seeing that for the first time and I was like, God damn! He freaking destroyed that thing. This is worth picking up in 3D, by the way. Definitely do it. Really good job. Really good stuff. Oh, and we have the sequel. One of the rare 3D movies being released in the United States. Uh, Warner's still on that train, and I'm glad. Is King of the Monsters, man. This was a fucking kick-ass movie. And people, critics complain, Oh, there's not enough monsters in this movie. We don't even see people all the time. 
and then they turn around and they give you all the monsters, and they're like, there's too many monsters in this movie, and people, you can't have enough people in it. it. Shut the fuck up. Like, they just wanted to complain to complain. It, this movie didn't do well in the box office, but it did get better reviews. Uh, fans were love this film. I love this movie. This, if you're a fan of the freaking Godzilla series in general, this is definitely worth picking up, even if you're not. Look at look at the cover of this. It's got a three-headed lightning dragon fighting Godzilla. Like, how can you look at that and be like, ah, oh, that movie looks like it's some bullshit. No, fuck you. Get this movie. Fantastic 3D. Very emotional. I'm glad that I saw it. I'm glad that I picked it up again. And it's got uh, Millie Bobby Brown, who's going to be... Who's a really good actress in this? She's obviously in Stranger Things, but she does a really good job here. And I just like I like the color grading on this cover. This is a very aesthetically pleasing cover to my eye balls. Also pick this up in three if you can. Really good stuff. Also, I really want to get Kong Skull Island. I saw that in three D, and I don't remember it too much, but I remember liking it. And people were like, dude, the three D is great. And I saw it in three D, but I just want to get it to complete the collection. This is one that I was disappointed with, and then I saw it again recently, and I was a little bit more impressed with it, but Goosebumps. Uh, well, I'm, when I say disappointed, I mean in the 3D itself. This movie is a fantastic movie, by the way. Uh, a lot of people kind of cringed on it because they were like, they saw the trailer and like, wow, this looks like something from the 90s, but it's like, that's like the whole point. This is, this movie is written like a Goosebumps story. R.L. Stein, I believe, was involved with it every step of the way. This movie was stuck in development hell for a long time, and I believe Tim Burton was on board to direct at one point, but this is directed by... I can't remember. I don't believe the... I can't believe... I don't remember the direct... Rob Letterman, and I was really nervous. When this movie was coming out, you have to understand, this was a time when Sony Pictures was making a bunch of awful films and i was like oh my god they're gonna ruin this rob letterman is no he made shark tale which is my least favorite dreamworks movie it's one of my least favorite animated movies ever and he also made gulliver's travels which is kind of a guilty pleasure i do want to get that in 3d gulliver's travels so i was like man i'm really nervous and i saw it and i fell in love with this movie i thought it was fantastic I was a little disappointed with the 3D. They don't push it as much as I think they could have, but I watched it again recently, and I was like, oh, the 3D's pretty okay. There's some pop-out stuff, but not too much. I I think a story like Goosebumps would be fantastic for the medium of 3D. They just don't make it as deep or as volumetric as they could have, but it's still there. The end credits actually has the best 3D in this entire movie when they're zooming through all the different landscapes and they're showing like the covers of the goosebumps books that's like the best 3d in the whole movie but even still this is a great movie to watch in general even without the 3d one thing i have to comment on is that sony has like thicker blu-ray cases than the normal ones are like you can't really see it but it, it's thicker and it's a little bit takes up a little bit more room on the shelf this is also one of the first ones i got it came out like 2015 or something 2016 well, the movie came out in 2015, but the Blu-ray came out in 2016. This is one that a lot of people say is demo-worthy. Uh, I think it looks great. It's not one that I would bring out as a demo-worthy movie. There's another space movie that I have that I would show people before this one. But it is still fantastic. Gravity. Awesome. Short and sweet film. Like I said, It's like an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, the, the visual effects are completely out of this world. And that yes, that's a pun. Uh, the 3D is pretty decently well done, uh, but th this is great, man. This this is a movie that I will still get choked up over. It, it's got a really powerful message. It's almost got the same message as another movie that I'm going to get to that I was talking about uh, just a moment ago, but it's it's just fantastic. This is, this is a feel, this is a really intense movie. Like, you want a movie that makes you feel uncomfortable, like, the whole way through, because you're like, oh, gosh, you know person could die this is it also dunkirk dunkirk i saw that in imax it's not a 3d movie but i did see it in imax like a proper imax theater and that that's one of the most intense movies i've ever watched anyway that i don't have that one the great gatsby in 3d this is a weird pick for a 3d movie the great gatsby uh you got leonardo 
DiCaprio and you got Tobey Maguire. But I'm really... <laughs> it's so weird. Because when people, when you say like, oh, oh yeah, The Great Gatsby. Like, you don't think, oh, that will be a good 3D story. Uh, but they, they made it in 3D. It's a weird... I believe this was shot in 3D. But the 3D in this movie is really good. Even if the source material doesn't really lend itself too fantastically. I understand what they were trying to do. They had like all the party scenes. And they, they wanted it to be like this exab exorbitant or ex fantastic over the top thing. But the 3D is fantastic even if the story isn't really lends itself well to a 3D. But I mean they, they have a lot of layers. They do a lot of stuff with the 3D. So if you pick this up strictly for the 3D you're not going to be disappointed. It's a pretty decent movie as well. This also another one that I had that one of the earlier ones I picked up. Now this is another steel book uh, that was gotten out of necessity. It's not a super fantastic movie and the 3D is pretty okay. Visually, it's interesting, but we have, we're talking about Gods of Egypt here. Got gods, we got all this stuff in the front. I will admit that the art looks really nice. Like I said, the art direction, the visually, this movie is pretty great. Uh, even if the story's a little bit lackluster and the 3D can be a little bit eh. But I saw this in IMAX 3D. And the shot where Jeffrey Rush is pulling the sun around the world fucking blew my mind. I Like, it was almost... That shot was almost worth price of admission alone to see this movie. But there are a lot of moments where they're high up in the air and it's, like, really deep and... You're like on top of an obelisk during the climax of the film, this big monument. And you can tell that a lot of stuff in this movie was shot with 3D in mind. But this isn't one that I would say you should run out and get immediately. This is one I probably will end up watching pretty soon. And that is Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a movie that I picked up. This movie, actually, Guardians of the Galaxy, is what really got me into the MCU. I remember when this movie came out, I wasn't going to see it, I didn't really care for it, I'm like, whatever, and I didn't really have much of a mind for the MCU, and I didn't really care about this movie, but my friend's like, dude, it's really good, you gotta go see it, and I went to go see it in IMAX 3D, and I fucking fell in love with it, this movie got me into the MCU, and the 3D Blu-ray home release really knocked it out of the park they have the changing aspect ratios for the IMAX scenes and it's a small thing it's a small difference but it makes all the difference the 3d is fantastic it's out of the screen highly recommend getting this in 3d blu-ray I love it when they mess around with the aspect ratios and I have another movie coming up that does the same thing and it's also a fantastic movie I mean everyone knows Guardians of the Galaxy We're gonna do a twofer on this one. Uh, the, the freaking case art's coming out though. So I remember I, I love Harry Potter. I like the I love these movies. I felt like the I felt like the movie adaptations told the story better than the book did, especially part two, uh, which I'm holding up backwards. I think I I don't know. Uh, but I felt like part two told the story better than the story did. The book has like a weird pacing thing where the first half is really slow. And then the second half is like, pew, you know, bullet train right to the end. It's nothing but action. But I picked, I saw this movie in IMAX 3D. Really wasn't impressed with the 3D. They didn't really do much with it. I, I remember seeing the dragon kind of come out of the screen but the 3D is really disappointing in these. I mean, it is flat, shallow, not much volume, not much coming out of the screen. Uh, this one was strictly a home release uh, in 3D. I picked it up because I'm like, might as well have both of them in 3D. I, th I feel like the 3D in this movie is slightly better than part two, but it's still not that super impressive. The movies itself are great, but they, they could have done more with the 3D, which is which I'm glad they kind of uh, learned that when they did Fantastic Beasts, but you're not missing out if you don't see these in 3D. It's really disappointing, and I believe I heard whisperings that a few of the Harry other a few of the other Harry Potter films were post converted into 3D. In fact, I believe a few minutes of Goblet of Fire and I believe Order of the Order of the Phoenix, I almost called it Order of the Stone, 
But I know for a fact that Sorcerer's Stone has gotten a 3D post conversion and it's going to be re released. It's going to be released in China. They post converted and released it in 4K. And if you guys remember, before they released Fantastic Beasts, they did IMAX screenings of all the Harry Potter films. And my theory is much like with Pixar, they actually went back and post converted all the movies and were planning on releasing them. Because they, they also did that with Star Wars. They were going to do that too. And episode two and three were finished. We know for a fact because people have seen those movies finished. But unfortunately, they uh, never released them in theaters. I would have loved to see those movies, but we only got episode one and Disney shit canned it. Uh, people speculated it's because there was a rights issue with 20th Century Fox, but now Disney owns 20th Century Fox, so there's no excuse not to release those movies. Release the 3D cut. We got the Snyder cut. I want the 3D cut now. Even though Snyder's DC is different. Oh, this is a 2D movie. I love this movie. And it is very long. And I don't even have the extended edition. But that is The Hateful Eight. This is a Tarantino film. Really fantastic. There's a lot of build up. It is so interesting. It is amazing. I don't know how he does it. But Tarantino can take like 30 minutes of people sitting in a tiny little carriage drawn by a horse drawn by horses and make it like the most interesting dialogue you've ever heard and you're just like enthralled the whole time this is a really interesting exciting movie i highly recommend picking this up it's a shame it didn't get the imax release it was supposed to because disney basically bullied tarantino in the movie theaters because this is when Star Wars Episode Seven came out, and they he wasn't allowed. To, he did a limited release of three, uh, not three D of IMAX. He did a road show, but I I missed that unfortunately. Would have loved to have seen it. Now we're about to look at another top ten. I would say top five, maybe even top one. That is, and everybody knows this one. How to Train Your Dragon in three D. This is platinum standard if you are gonna go out and make a 3d movie you gotta watch this one and you have to also read that book that captain 3d phil mcnally wrote to understand how to effectively use the medium this is a master class in 3d and it is deep volumetric they got stuff coming out of the screen it uses 3d as a storytelling device just like Coraline. it is very intense this is it absolute if you don't have this movie in 3d and you have a 3d tv go get it right now what the hell are you doing even when this movie came out in 2010 critics were like holy crap you got to see this movie in 3d and this movie really showed what 3d can do for an animated film and i know you make all the jokes about avatar is like an animated movie too but i i would recommend this over avatar fantastic movie in and of itself as well even without the 3d but the 3d really brings us to a whole new level and i believe that was dreamworks second 3d film too then we have how to train your dragon 2 i saw this in imax 3d uh 3d isn't as uh it's not like not as well done but it isn't as deep and as used much as this movie was 3d still fantastic don't you get me wrong but it, it it's really good though. Like, what can I say? I mean, How to Train Your Dragon Two. You know, it made you cry, make you sad, make you tear up. Won't tell you why because of spoilers. Even though the movie came out in 2014, I really believe this movie should have won Best Animated Picture. I think this movie is better than uh, Big Hero Six. I don't think Big Hero Six is a particularly bad film, but this one was so much better, and it got snubbed, dude. That it, it, it's such a crying shame. But this was a cool IMAX 3D release. Let me make sure camera and batteries are doing good. 